no boat on my feet through the fourth phase of your gait cycle. That'd be good, buddy. That's right. What are you doing? <laughs> Trying to close it? Good job, Michael. Thanks, buddy. You do it. Blow the leaves out. No, the <laughs> blow the leaves out. There you go. All I want for Christmas are tripods. I mean, I, I collect these things. They just, it's all about the tripod. I'm using a tripod right here. Why am I in this big brown leather chair and not in the Studio 1.5? Am I multitasking? Yes, yes I am. Taking in a little football on this Thanksgiving break and making a vlog about running shoes in the process. All right, whoo, here we go, diving in. What would be included in my perfect pair of running shoes? Now, well, let's do it. Question of the day, you know what it is. What would be included in your perfect pair of running shoes. You can go in any direction. And I should mention, I think it's been two years ago, two years, roughly, roughly, that I made the vlog, The Anatomy of Running Shoes, okay? Upper right hand corner, linked in the description. It definitely needs to be updated. Uh, but I think there was like 15, 16, 17 terms that I explained in that vlog, okay? The Anatomy of Running Shoes. But whether you want to answer the question of the day talking about shoelaces, about the vamp, about the heel counter, about the tongue, about the footbed, about the type of last, eh, that's, a neat, that's a unique one, the last that you prefer. Of course, the durometer, all these terms that I'm learning in my running shoe books here. So um, we're going to break this down. And at some point in life, I will have a sketch pad that's electronic where I can uh, show you by like, visually, like what as I, because I, when I'm out there running for two, three, four hours up in the mountains, I think about these things. I think about running shoes. I think about the foot strike that I'm experiencing out there. And I think about what would I, if I was to sketch my own pair of running shoes, what would it look like? What would the midsole, the outsole look like? And I'm going to give you a couple thoughts on some shoes sitting around me here that might get your attention in 2022. Okay. First of all, 
in order, this is what hit me as I was sitting down here just and actually up in the garage organizing mentally what I was thinking about with running shoes. The first idea, the perfect running shoe for me, the first thought that entered my, my brain was the decoupled groove. Yes, in the Nova Blast, okay, that's right here on the outsole from the heel into the midfoot, okay, and I'm wondering if I need to move the camera a little closer so I can, yes, I do. I always need to do that. Hold on. Okay, I think that's a little better. The decoupled groove there on the outsole, okay. Also, I'm telling you, everyone, watch out. I said this, I so I gave my top three running shoes of 2021 a couple days ago, in case you missed that vlog. A lot of people watching it, and I talked a lot about the Mizuno Wave Rebellion. Watch out for Mizuno in 2022. Decoupled groove, I just love them. I think it adds nice geometric bounce to your foot strike. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know all the physics behind why that groove in the outsole enhances what I feel definitely in the Nova Blast and felt a little bit in the way Mizuno Wave Rebellion. Um, but watch out for the both of these shoes in 2022. So decoupled groove, heel flare, all right, yep. Next for my perfect pair of running shoes, definitely the heel flare, that, or also known as the elf flare there in the back of the heel counter at the top. Uh, what is called the tab. This is called the tab of the collar of the shoe. This is called the collar. This is the heel counter right here. And this is called the tab. So I love flares there in the back. Moving on to the tongue of the shoe. Think Skechers Max Road Fly 5. It's not a plush tongue, but it lays on top. of. If you own the Max Road 5 from Skechers, you know what I'm talking about. That tongue is something special. It's not even uh, it's not even semi gusseted, and that's actually my next point. If I had to build a perfect running shoe, I would want it to be semi gusseted through that tongue. This tongue is not, but I'm telling you, Skechers, you nailed it in the Max Road Five. So if you want to see what a perfect tongue is, pick up the Max Road Five, and you'll know what I'm talking about. So comfortable, and almost more important than comfort, lays on top of the foot. Beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. Oh, it's hard to describe. I, I accept, accept to say beautifully, no movement on top of that foot. Absolutely awesome. Moving on to the laces. I lean toward flat laces versus round. And um, laces are critical. Oh yeah, a lace that has a little bit of elasticity built into it, okay? I'll just say that like, so you can cinch just so you guys know, and actually I'll go into it, the vamp and the eyelet chain. So I'm actually gonna move you guys right here. Hold on, there we go. Can you see, I think it's a little better lighting. So the eyelet chain is right here at the bottom. I do not like any scrunching at the bottom of the eyelet chain, which happened a little bit from uh, New Balance and the Beacon shoes, even though I love the Beacon, so I don't like that, uh, but, as long as this vamp is, so the vamp is right here on the side of the shoe, I prefer, if I had to build a perfect running shoe, a, snug, a little bit on the snug side for the fit. That's why I probably, hold on, that's probably why I don't run in a lot of Ultra shoes, because Ultra has such a wide toe box, which is fine. Some people prefer a lot of splaying, all right? Splay, a splay, S-P-L-A-Y for their toes. I do not yearn for splaying. It's, you know, and it's probably just because, I don't know, probably the shoes that I've been wearing my entire life. There you go. Moving on to semi-gusseted we talk about. I would want semi-gusseted limited overlays. That's why, you know, Mizuno, boom, Mizuno Wave Rebellion. This is not a, this is kind of like a spray painted on overlay. Love, love, love that Mizuno. I don't like, uh, I'm trying to see if there's one, like Nike, totally un, like totally unnecessary. I predict the Invincible is gonna be streamlined, reduce the weight of the shoe a ton in 2022. This is an overlay that just is not necessary, okay? And that fly knit is heavy as well. Hoka, yeah, even like this, just not necessary. I just, I know it doesn't add that much to the shoe, but I'd prefer more of that sprayed on effect. Also A6, I'm gonna call you out as well. Moving on here, deeper heel pocket, okay? I like my heel to feel secure. I'm trying to think of a shoe. You know, the Nova Blast 2 is a good example of a deeper heel pocket, so there's no slipping in the heel where your heel is just really secure at the bottom of the heel counter inside the shoe. Uh, let's see, and a little weaker, okay? A little weaker 
on the heal counter strength. So this Nova Blast might be a little strong. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum is the Saucony Endorphin Pro Plus. This shoe is amazing, but the heel counter is no no good. Like it just it, there's no uniformity, no strength. I felt like I was slipping through that heel pocket in the Saucony Endorphin Pro Plus. So I think Scott Saucony is going to have to figure out something there in the back of the shoe in 20. 22. Okay, moving on. Here we go. Geometric craziness in the outsole. I would explore that if I was building the perfect running shoe. I would do something. See this Nova Blast, you all know, like that's a, it's a very unique cut to the midsole. And again, I think it enhances the ride. Uh, I think it gives you a little bit more energy return through your personal biomechanics. At least it, I felt it for me, and I think it, I, it is, it's again, I don't know all the physics behind it, the actual science, but I like what ASICS is doing there with cutting unique uh, shapes and triangles and pyramids into the midsole. Okay, there it is, moving on to, we already covered the snug toe box, durometer leaning in the direction of softer. Durometer. Do, what is the durometer? The durometer is um, it's the softness scale or hardness scale of the midsole. So the Rebel V2 from New Balance is known as to be the softest midsole out there. Basically, like it's just buttery soft, as I said in the full review. By the way, all these shoes around me, full reviews linked down below in the description. Um, so this Rebel V2 is just really, really soft and basically too soft. Uh, I love it. I love it. But it's a little too soft for really fast speeds. You don't want to be sinking into the midsole too, too much. I suspect New Balance will work on that in 2022. What's an example? You know, I think the Max Road 5 is actually a good balance. It's soft, but it also, it's not too soft. I think it's a pretty good example. Or actually back here, can't forget about this guy, the Rincon 3. Ooh, the Rincon 3 is pretty soft too, but a little better than the Rebel V2. All right, here we go. If I was building the perfect running shoe, no boat on my feet through the fourth phase of your gait cycle, the leg swing. The reason, have you noticed, like Kip Limo, Jacob Kip Limo, uh, am I saying his name right, uh, from Uganda, who just set the half marathon world record, all of these Nike athletes are not wearing the Alpha Fly. It's too bulky, it's, it's like a boat on your feet. Uh, I don't have it out here, the Alpha Fly, but the more V3 from New Balance, love this shoe, but it is kind of like you, you have a boat on your feet, which, and same with the Invincible, a little bit of that boat feel, and I would lean away from the boat feel, slim down that midsole. You don't need so much midsole protruding out of the sides there. Um, so, and I just realized my laptop just died. Hold on. And we're back. Time in. Okay, so no boat on my feet, hence no Alpha Fly. Uh, last but not least is, oh yeah, the outsole pods on the Max Road 5. I love. So, last but not least, if I were to build my perfect running shoe, you know me, I lean in the direction of less rubber on the outsole. I realize that that can impact the durability for of the, some of these running shoes. But I suspect Mizuno's onto something with the outsole of this Wave Rebellion. High durability prediction on this outsole without covering the entire outsole with rubber. So I like that Mizuno, great job there. I'm trying to think of one that might have too much, really none of these because these are all my favorites around me. Uh, maybe, yeah, nope, these all have limited, so limited outsole rubber. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. And you know, I don't often talk about this, but um, the footbed or the, the sock liner or the insole, whatever you want to call it, I don't like a, a footbed that has too much built up. Um, now, I, I don't overpronate a ton, a little bit, which is normal for most people, but I don't like a really strong or overbuilt arch support. So this is actually a pretty good example of a, a good footbed, 
but not uh, overbuilt here from Skechers. Let me actually just pull out. That's probably not the best. Hold on. Let me see what A6 is doing here in the Nova Blast 2. Yeah, that's a little little, little higher quality there in the Nova Blast 2 for the footbed. So I like a, I like a well-done footbed, but not. Uh, I don't like it to be overbuilt where I feel like I have an orthotic in my running shoe. There you go. Um, that's some elements of my perfect running shoe. If I were to design my own someday, who knows? You just never know, all right? Never say never, right, everyone? So this, all of these, again, are listed down below in case you're interested in watching the full reviews of these shoes. But now you get a sense of, if you watch the full reviews on a regular basis, what I prefer, what I don't prefer. And actually, this vlog is critical as we transition into 2022 and you're interested in watching and learning about running shoes in the new year and buying new shoes in the new year, uh, my approach to shoes and what I lean in the direction of and lean away from when it comes to elements included in the design, the build quality, et cetera, et cetera. So, and these books behind me, like I'm always trying to learn, okay? So always trying to educate myself to stay, uh, stay ahead of the curve with respect to materials being used, the production process, um, how materials are sourced, how materials are created, um, even right down to the, the shipping and how do the shoes actually end up in our hands from you know, place, you know, places around the world. It's really, it's, it's a really involved process. Okay, comment of the day, question of the day. Here we go, see Kate, you get the, Comment of the day, uh, this is yesterday about the athlete, uh, what athlete inspired you, and I couldn't agree more, um, and I'm not a gymnastics person by any means, but I couldn't agree more. Like, I remember watching, C. Kate says, Carrie Strug and that 96 Olympic gymnastics team, I always love the sport, but watching that taught me a lot about overcoming obstacles and fighting for your dreams. My mom bought me a sports magazine after that Olympics, and it had pictures of her vault frame by frame. I cut them out and hung them in my room. Those pictures always motivated me to do my best, no matter how hard something seemed, will always be my favorite Olympic moment in history. I couldn't agree more. And again, I'm not an Olymp uh, I'm not a gymnastics, you know, person, but like that moment was, uh, who wasn't inspired by Carrie's jump uh, pole vault, right? Uh, is that, no, not pole vault, um, <laughs> vault. Okay, see, see, I'm not a gymnastics person. That's, there you go, I just proved it. Okay, question of the day, I already asked it. What is included? What would be included in your running shoe design? Onward and upward, everybody. We'll keep designing together here, moving forward. All right, we'll toss it to the vlog from a couple days ago, my top three running shoes of 2021. Right there, right there, right there. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.